and all that. But James, when um, when Kevin gets done singing in just a minute, you come and, and break the bread of life for us, and we are looking forward to it. Uh, let me pray for you before I, I sit back down, and, um, and then I'm going to turn it back over to Kevin. Father, I do just thank you again for this time that we have to gather here together today. But right now, I especially just pray for Brother James as he comes, that you would open his mouth to speak the words of life from your holy word. God, we pray that your Holy Spirit would just take over the time of preaching today and that, that he might know your presence, that we might witness your power, and that lives would be changed through the preached word. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
remember. But you know what we're also going to do? We're going to heaven one day. I've never been more homesick than before. Never been more homesick. I'm not taking this bus out. I'm going to one day. There's a light in the window. The table spread in splendor.
I've never been there on the ship before. I'm sick and torn of the womb, but I love the Creator who is going to take me to be with Him forever and ever and ever. Well, let me say a few things before I tell you real things. Number one, young man, we're going to let Matty go to heaven. And hopefully, one or two baggage. Okay. <laughs> that we want to know that. Another thing is, for many years, I held a crown. I was the ugliest creature you ever had. <laughs> but Jeff have saved me from that time. <laughs> and I am so glad that you called Jeff. Uh, to be your pastor, Ronnie, I am a lot better looking than he is. <laughs> but it's a joy to be with you today. Toby and I, Amanda, we have a lot of good memories. I'm about to say that, bro. Uh, we had a good time. I remember very people getting saved. That's my best memory. I remember people growing up in the Lord, in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. I've got some good memories about St. Helen. Don't know what they got about me, but I've got some good ones about them. But I am glad and tickled and thrilled and everything else to have me told with it today. Uh, she is uh, the best of the best. And she got the words of the worst. <laughs> but, uh, and then Amanda, uh, she, uh, she was here. And uh, she had me. I'm glad that her and her husband, Justin, my older grandson, Avery, and my youngest grandson, Sonia, is here. They uh, moved from Arizona to Birmingham. And they can come down from Birmingham and spend a little time with it and go back. But they weren't able to do that when they were in Arizona. But I'm proud of my daughter, her son, and her husband. Uh, these two boys mean a whole lot to me. And uh, so you might not want me to say this, but when I die, if I die before Jesus come back, don't really think I am. But if I die for you, and you want to see me or hear me, then call us on you. He is, he is exactly like me. Well, somebody had said, and I debated it, said, tell us some stories about St. Emma. Well, there's so much you can tell. <laughs> but I would sit with Amanda and tell me like night. Uh, we would begin to talk back. And uh, they reminded me of a few things. I remember my daddy, Rosie's daddy. Uh, he kept telling me to come see him. I moved in. Said, come see me. Come see me. Come see me. And one day he said, when you come and see me? I said, I can't find the house. <laughs> I went to see that man several times. Couldn't find his house. But I remember the little boy telling me, well, we thought we got a smart preacher, but we can see we didn't. <laughs> and uh, I, I remember that. I remember Bubba Deeds. I was sitting on his porch. I loved the Deeds. You know, um, I, I, I really did. I, I, there's nothing good about me except I'm a people person. I love people. I care about people. And uh, I sat in the port talking to him and he said, Oh, he said, yes. said, did you hear the news this morning? I said, no, it wasn't a deal. He said, we're not going to be able to make ground bail or hay no more. No more well bailed to hay. Why, Mr. Deed? He said the cows are not getting a 
playing me. I've used that for, for many, many years. Uh, uh, it's, uh, it's good. I remember the deeds. We went on a trip. By the way, the best trip I've ever been on, and I better get some amen from this. The best trip I've ever been on was our trip to Branson. We had a ball, and, and a lot of good things, funny things happened. But I never had a better trip than that, one that I enjoyed anymore, appreciated anymore, and benefited in more than that. But, uh, but uh, I, I remember uh, Miss Deed on that trip we took. She got in a, what was it, told me? Gun? A ball pit. A what? A ball, ball pit. pit. Yeah. yeah. I've seen pictures of And she got it. <laughs> now she wasn't old, but she was old. <laughs> And, and everybody won that said, she's a nut. <laughs> and I would have preached, and I had to be honest and say, amen. <laughs> but we had some, some good times. I remember going to the ball game. Uh, uh, I, I'm a big old big fan. We had some Alabama fans. We had some Auburn fans. We had some that were no fans. But we, I remember. Very, very well. I remember uh, that uh, we uh, had a young lady, Dana, and she was a big Auburn fan. And Dana died. I don't see her daddy here today, her mama gone. But we went to Jack to see the old Mick Rebels and the Auburn Tigers. It was 101 degrees. I remember her sitting there, she was sick, literally dying, but I've never seen anybody enjoy it inside. And, uh, and we went down and saw that thing. I remember a lot of good things that happened at uh, St. Elmo. I, killed, I, I cannot forget uh, my buddy and his precious wife over Chalk. I'm sure y'all remember him. He uh, was old, but he played softball for us. And be honest with you, Jeff, he's good to see these young women now. But he enjoyed it so much, and he was thankful to it. And of course, the reason I'm here today. I've been in the ministry, Pat, and for 20 years, been in evangelism for 34 now. And I've never made a guarantee. If, if, I don't say what side church, how much we're going to give me, are you going to pay me money, are you going to feed me, or are you going to sleep me? If the day's open, I go. But when Jeff called me, I said, I have a guarantee. Well, what happened? I said, I have a guarantee. I'm going to get to Bumbo Cow. <laughs> oh, I ain't coming. <laughs> so I remember that the way. Well, this is the book I play. This is the book that I play every one of us has in our hearts. And we might not sin against God. This is the book that I called it to go to heaven and be with Jesus forever. Oh, we have a heavenly father if we've been born again. The family of God are those who have been born again, born from above, redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus. Repented of their sin, and not only know about Jesus, but know Jesus. I wanted to think about our Heavenly Father. I wanted to think about our future. 
Now I'm saying the most important decision you ever make is whether to receive or reject Jesus. Because if you reject Jesus, you will not have eternal life. But if you receive Jesus, you have eternal life. I want you, I hope we'll have your Bible. Uh, I want you to look at four different passages with me. Uh, Psalm 19, 9, uh, 17. Psalms 9, 17. I, I want you to listen at the Word of God. Listen at what it says. The wicked to be turned into hell. And all the nations that forgot God. That's a promise, my friend. That's a promise from the one who never broke a promise and never will break a promise. America is not America at this moment. And we as Christians need to look at why. And the simple question is, we have forgotten God. We're too busy in the flesh. We're, we're too busy with ourselves to remember God. My friend, listen. God is your creator. He made you. He owns you. And He is your Redeemer. If you have received Him. Just the fact that He created you does not mean you're going to have eternal life. You must be born again. And our nation must remember God. Look in Job 8.13. Job 8.13. 13. So are the paths of all that forgot God. And the hypocrites hope to perish. <coughs> we who have forgot God on the broad way that lead to Detroit. My friend, if you have forgotten God and not obeyed Him by being born again, you have a past that God didn't intend for you to walk in. If you say you're saved, and you're not. <laughs> the Bible says the hypocrite hope is a parish. I have people tell me, well, I love Jesus, but I don't care about the church. That doesn't make about as much sense as me saying the jail is handsome. <laughs> How can you love Jesus and not love his blood? I don't care what you say about me, but you better not say nothing about me, Tom. Amen. I want a few words to know we're going to be that about it again. <laughs> Listen to me. Listen to me. You must love the church because you love God. And I tell you what hurt in America, Jim. You're a theologian and I'm just a little. Come on. But the Bible said we're to forsake not the sins of ourselves together. And the Bible said in the right of day we're to come together to worship more often, not less often. And I understand the Bible, okay? And I'm not stupid. I didn't look. But the virus had called us to 
quit assembling, to quit worshiping, and our nation and our churches are becoming weaklings and tongue coats when it comes to quit that. I want to tell you something. Christ it should, be, it should be your focal point. He should to be your place of eternity. And Christianity should be your light that it shines in your morning. That all men might see you. Well, let's look at Job 11 20. Job 11, 20. Listen at what it says. But the eyes of the wicked to fall. You know, in Isaiah, it said that the people got so far away from God's word and so far away from God that they forgot God. And they started calling evil good. And they started calling Evil of good and bad and good evil. That's how they call it better free and free better. My friend, because of our refusal to remember God, our nation and many of our people have called good bad and bad good. Our nation is in a mess. Our nation needs to remember what God said is good is good. And what God said is bad is bad. I had a man a couple of weeks ago taught me and he said, I was talking about what what the Bible said about sin, you know. I mean, I believe God created male and female, and I don't think we have a choice. Mm -hmm. You know, when we go messing with that, with that message, with something else. Now, I believe God created man, man and woman. I believe it's supposed to be man and woman, not man and man, or woman and woman. Uh, and, and you know, the guy would tell me, how do you know so uh, I said, sir, I don't know anything. But I said, I got a book that tells me everything. Mm -hmm. And if God said it's sin, it's sin. <laughs> and it always had been, and it always will be. But see, if we don't get in the world, what we're going to talk about in a minute, if we don't get in the Word and let the Word get in us, we're going to be guilty of what they were in Isaiah's day. We're not going to be able to understand right, right, and wrong, wrong, and good, good, and bad, bad. We're going to compromise. We're not going to let God's Word rule. We're going to let flesh rule. And I hate to tell you something. Now, I love a mess, and I hate to tell you that. I love a mess. But I'm going to tell you something. We're living in a fallen America. We're living in America that had no regard for God, no regard for God's word, no regard for God's worship, no regard for God for God's will. That's what we are. Oh, my friend, listen to that. I think that God says, and when God says, that says. And me and you used to say, and we said it when I was here. Father, you might probably remember. God said it, I believe it, that said it. God said it, that said it, whether we believe it or not. It said it. But we have become so inconsistent in our daily walk with God. <clears throat> Don't tell me you can't walk with God. Any walk with God by faith, and you and I can walk with God by faith. But we're not walking with God. We're compromising.
mind. We're weak. We're, we're tongue coats. We're not telling them for Jesus. My youngest brother is dead and gone, but all over the, literally the world, he put up a sign that said, enough is enough. Turn up for Jesus. Now I want to tell you something, church. Enough is enough. It's time for us to stand up, speak up, and say of Jesus. Who do you know that you don't kill and go to hell? Who do you know that you don't kill and go to hell? I'll tell you who it is. It's that person or person you don't tell how to go to heaven. I love my family. And I'm looking forward to spending eternity with them in heaven. And I want every one of them to know Jesus and love Jesus and love each church. Well, in Ephesians 2.12, it said, there was a time in our lives when we had no hope. But when we repented of our sins and we see Jesus, our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. And we have victory in Jesus. Oh, my friend, in the beginning, God. I believe that, amen. And in the end, God. And I want to see you, son. We are to love that God. We are to obey that God. And we are to serve that God. And Matthew said we are to do it first. <clears throat> Seek ye first the kingdom of God. I practice a lot of churches. Uh, I'm not praying to tell you fast. I've been, I've been in about 2,000 Baptist churches. And I've known a lot of members that had Jesus not in their top ten. Jesus to be in our top one. He took to be in our top one. He, he meant it to be in our top one. That's why there is only one God. There are not several. There is only one God. The God of creation and the God of redemption, the God in the beginning. Only one God. Well, no, he didn't create us for our pleasure. I get sick of the people. Oh, I've got to, I've got to be that. Oh, I've got to be with faith. Oh. Listen, God didn't make you to please yourself. He made you to please him. Mm -hmm. Amen. He made you to please him. Well, uh, name of one God, <coughs> you know, uh, we need to understand that. We need to realize that. Oh, my friend, let me simply say to you, and I know you too, well, don't put it too long. So let me tell you something, you and I had better get in the world longer and we better worship longer. We better quit that man about we can't take too long. We better get in that world and let that world get in us and we better get in the church and let the church get in us. It's time to quit picnicking and partying and it's time for us to proclaim the wonderful words of life. My friend, listen to that. What we need is revival. Revival. Somebody said, well, I have revival. We don't like them. Why well, take a bath? They don't like them either. But I'm glad you tell them. Because if you don't, I know it. 
And let me tell you something. The world knows we are not having revival in God's church. We think that Christians we need revival. And I'm going to cut it a little bit shorter. Uh, uh, my said, don't look at my watch. But I, I'm going to cut it a little bit shorter. But I want to tell you three places to revival. Three places you must go home to revival. And I'm going to look at three different scriptures. And then I'm going to say amen. And the preacher, not the pastor, but the preacher, is to get to the gumbo first. <laughs> is that under two? Look with me. Well, I'll give you a minute to find it. In 2 Chronicles. Look with me. In 2 Chronicles. Uh, look, turn to the 15th chapter. Uh, in the 15th chapter of Second Chronicles, verse 1, 2, and 3, it said that a knowledge of God's word is necessary for the Bible. You cannot detour the Bible and have the Bible. You can't do it. Revival is because of the Word of God. Sunday period, I don't know how it is at Sunday or more, but most Sunday period tries to have bell to you. They talk all day long about what happened in the week, and then somebody said, well, we ought to sleep with the scripture. And they have fun in the devil. We better get serious about Sunday. I want to tell you something that I know to be a fact. There have never been a great Christian church that had not been a great Sunday church. We're not serious about God's word. We're serious about eating. We're serious about making money. We're serious about winning games. But when it comes to Sunday school, Killing our nation and killing our own hearts. Second Corinthians, Second Chronicle, fifteen said, "And the Spirit of God caught him upon Elijah, the son of Obed, and he went out to meet Asa, of which I had to time to tell you the story, and said unto Asa, Heal ye me, Asa, and all the children and and Benjamin." The Lord is with you, which while you yet be with him, and if ye seek him, he will be found in you, but if you forsake him, he will forsake you. Now for a long season, Israel had been without the true God. When Asaph became the leader, that were without God. They had been caught in the word of God, the worship of God, the will of God. And without a teaching, please, and without the law. We need to want to hear and be taught the word of God. Oh, we have a truth to fit to. Everybody knows John 3 says, David. The 23rd John. But how deep are you in the knowledge of the Word of God? There's never been revival in my heart and your heart and churches and country until we let the Bible become the focus of our lives. We give with so much Jesus. It was so much. Jesus. Oh, my friend, listen. Hide the word of God in your heart that you might not sin against God. You people that don't care about Bible, let me tell you something, they turn wrong with your heart. 
You people don't care about church. It's something wrong with your heart. That heart hadn't been remade. You better prepare to meet the good God. Let one bridge to revive is a knowledge of God's word. Look in 2 Chronicles 15, verse 16. Listen to what it says. And this is good. Oh, they ain't nothing in the book ain't good. Amen? Are y'all out there? Well, throw something at me, will you? Listen to what it says. And also concerning Michael, the mother of Asa. This is Asa's mother. He was the king. Asa removed her from being queen because he had made an idol in a grove. And Asa cut down her idol and stamped it and burned it at the brook Kalei. We love to say, I love you. Do you really love it? The, 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 the. See, love has action with it. Jesus said, I love you. And his action with the death and the cross. He didn't, didn't talk it, he walked it. This woman had forgotten her. And her own son said, I ain't putting up with it. Let me tell you something. Don't, don't, don't put me in jail for inside of the light. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying for the, it's time for the church to be the church. And when wrong is being done, that I hear from the church. Revival leads to action. Things are different now. Jesus is head of my life. Then the third, Second Chronicles 16, verse 7 to 9. At that time, Hannah, the children, came to Asher, king of Judah, and said unto Asher, Because I have, have relied on the king of Judah, not God, the king of Judah, and not relied on the Lord thy God, they chose the threat over the spirit. They chose the war over the one who created the war. Listen, therefore it is, is the hope of the king of Syria escape out of thy hand. Listen, world now is to be open and it living a huge hope with very many children and horsemen. Yet because they didn't rely on the Lord, he delivered them into their hands. Listen, and I love this book. I, I wish you had your Bible open. Second Chronicles, verse 16, verse 9. We don't have the Bible open. Write that down. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth. <laughs> to show himself strong in the behalf of them who heart is perfect toward him. He and I have done food. Therefore, from henceforth, I shall have war. The east side, then east side, but that's it. That is, we might have faith in God. I, I love that song, Have Faith in God. He on his tongue. And the Bible said in Hebrews 11, see, you cannot please God if you don't have faith in him. 
made it impossible to please God. People don't have faith in Him. My friend, I have to announce to you today that there's no way around the Word of God. You can't substitute for the Word of God. Revival is built around the Word of God. Not methods, not organization, not even the services we plan. With revival. It's not an option. God must be in charge. When revival comes, God will be in charge. God will, God way, God walk, will all be performed. I want to tell you something. Because I love you. The Bible is necessary for life. Just like a bath is. We are all in the flesh. We're living in a world full of flesh. Fallen world. Hebrews 10, 4 and 5 says, Would I not to forsake your sin and myself together? And in Luke 4, 16, Jesus set the example. On the Sabbath day, he was worshiping his Father. We have made many excuses why worship is not important and why we can't worship. But I will tell you something, my friend. If it was important to the perfect, Lamb of God. If he needed to worship his Father, how much do you and I need to worship our Father? Ah, uh, my friend, listen at me. Listen at me. We need a revival. I want to hopefully quit and just by two minutes. Don't call me too bad. But I didn't want to say to you, because I love you. I love America. I, I, I do. We're still the best that is, even though we ain't what we was. Listen to me. The American people need to study the word of God. Daddy, your responsibility is to teach your children the word of God. And no daddy don't do it now. Grandpa, that's your responsibility. I am wondering if the root of our fall in our hearts, in our homes, and in our homes is not that we Quit turning the Bible. You quit saying the Bible. Our leadership in Washington, and I'm not talking about the Republicans or the Democrats or the other party. I'm talking about all of them. Our leadership is making stupid decisions. Why can we not have law and order? I never thought I'd live in America that it was all right. To burn down a Wendy's, we don't have to pay for that. No law, no order. Let me tell you, I love our police. We got some bad ones, but let me tell you something, Jeff. We got some bad preachers. We got some bad teachers. We got some bad deacons. We're going to have bad in anything we have, but we'll tell you something. God gave us the Ten Commandments, and God built, and we built our laws upon the Ten Commandments, and we are to be a lawful, obedient, nation. 
You can't get played when you love us. You pray for us. My friend, listen. Why can't we have law and order? Why do we have no real peace? Because if we forget the Pence of Peace, there is no peace. And America, for the main part, have forgotten the plan to pray. Why it took Lord in this? It is because God has been left out. Our hearts, our homes, our laws, our food, our businesses. God is not in the government circles in Washington. They think they don't need God. Our nation needs God. And they are in the world we live. I want to ask you something, and I'll be through. And I do appreciate that. Honor. And it is honor to come back to St. Elmo. Appreciate the privilege. I just want you to know, I know it's a responsibility. The truth is set up for me. And if I am not free, my family will not be free. My church will not be free. My community will not be free. And my country will not be free. I gotta get my heart right. I gotta get my home right. And then the homeland will turn the eyes upon Jesus and look for it in a wonderful day. I'm so glad that God is our hope. Please, folks, don't live your life. Forgetting God, forgetting His truth, forgetting Christianity. That's our only hope. God, His church, Christianity. And I, I didn't know I was going to do this, but I'm going to do it. Who don't like it, Jeff? Don't invite me back. But I want to tell you how I know that God. Sacred by a heavy burden, needful load of guilt and shame. Then the hand of Jesus touched me, and now I'm no longer the same. He touched me. Oh, he touched me, and oh, the joy that flooded my soul. Something happened, and now I know. My Jesus touched me, and made me whole. Sin. I may get blessed, this Savior, since he claimed to make me whole. I will never cease to praise him. I'll shout him while he turns He touched me. Oh, he and all the joy that flood my soul, something happened, and now I know he touched me. Oh, that he might touch your heart. Oh, that he might touch yours. Oh, that he might touch America. And may me. Listen to the come through. He'll touch you. Oh, he'll touch you. 
and all the joy that will flood your soul. Something will happen and you will know. I pray that we will is filled with fire. Father, I pray that we learn your word and we live your word and we do your word and we let your word be our guide, a light unto our path and a lamp unto our feet. God, if there's one here that does not know Jesus, oh God, don't let him go away without Jesus. Oh, God, let them receive Jesus with pity of sins and, and be born again that they might have life forever. Some people call it heaven, but those who have been born again call it home. God, let speak to the Christians. God, this altar ought to be filled with Christians. Praying that they might let their light shine. Praying that their butcher would be took off their life. And that people would see Jesus. And that Jesus would do what only he can do. Maybe then somebody needs to join the church. Oh God, what a great day to come into the church. Born again and serving the church for what he died. Now, God, as the pastor stands here, may no one come that you don't lead, but may everyone come that you lead. We as people don't have a right to say no to you. You are the Lord of Lord and the King of Kings, and we have no right to say no to you. So, Father, help us to say yes, Lord, yes, and we come just as we are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. See, I'm standing here, God speaking, and we'll turn to your feet. If God is leading, you come. The altar open and death is waiting. And God is speaking. You come. Just Smoke on the mountain, and you um, know, um, Zach's gonna actually do the lead on this one, so y'all pray for it. <laughs> i 
much fun out there, ladies and gentlemen. We want to thank you all for being here this morning. And we are going to be having our traditional uh, uh, home. I keep wanting to say Thanksgiving. We're just a long way from Thanksgiving. Homecoming uh, down on the grounds. And so let me remind you, you know, put your mask on before you go into Fellowship Hall over there. We've got some over there at the Fellowship Hall, and there's some in the foyer back here. If you have an offering and, and need to, you can drop that in the box in the foyer as you go out this morning. And uh, so let me just remind you about those things. But let's pray. And uh, we're going to have our, our blessing for the meal. We'll go ahead and do that right now. So why don't we all stand together this morning. And uh, again, thank you for being here. And uh, Ronnie, I'm going to pick on you this morning. Would you offer our benediction and, and give prayer for our, our meal today? Father God, thank you so much for family and friends that have gathered to worship you this morning. Lord, thank you for the word that Brother James brought this morning, Lord. Lord, I ask you to go with us this week, go with us into the fellowship hall as we break bread together. I ask you to bless the food, bless those who have prepared it. Go with us this week, and uh, we ask you all in your name. Amen. 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 Amen